Well, welcome back to Thesis Pending, the weekly vlog series where I talk about how I haven't got any work done. So it was kind of to be expected this week. I was at VidCon last weekend. If you're interested in how that was, I've made a video about it. I'll put a thing there. And after getting back from VidCon on very late on Monday night, I had the con flu. I always get sick when I go anywhere, like even just traveling like around the UK, I will find some strain of a virus that I haven't had yet and I will get sick. So I spent most of this week just in bed. So since some people have asked me what my research is about and I haven't really talked about it very much, I thought that would be a good way to use this week and hopefully next week I can actually talk about what I've been doing. <laughs> I've been fairly cryptic about my research just because I'm working with a company and like, I can't remember the exact details of like the things that I agreed to when I started doing this and there was something to do with intellectual property and I'm a bit worried like if I say too much like I'll breach a contract that I signed and don't have a copy of anymore because but I think I can kind of just talk about what's going on in general without going too specific it should be fine I mean hopefully in the next year I'll have a paper published about it and then I'll have my thesis about it so it's not like it's going to be a secret that much longer and it's not exactly like it needs to be a secret. I'm just paranoid basically. So if you're British you're probably familiar with these. Ordnance Survey Maps. Uh, they are very much what you use if you're going out and about into the countryside and you want a map of the area. They're like the best mapping agency in the UK, not biased at all. Uh, <laughs> and they fund my research. And my research is about how we design the maps that are put onto smartphones because so much of the conventions of mapping that we're used to are really deeply embedded in paper maps and they aren't necessarily going to carry over, cross over into a different medium that well and there hasn't been an awful lot of research as to how to present this information and how to make it the most useful for people to navigate with. There's been a lot of research that talks about how naturally landmarks are a lot more useful thing to use for navigation rather than like when you're using a sat nav in your car or you've told us Google Maps where, how to get somewhere, it'll usually give you instructions relating to distance, you know, after so many meters turn. And although that's kind of useful for like a ballpark of how far it is, we are not very good as a species at judging distances accurately unless we've been like really trained in doing that. So it's trying to look at a more natural way that we navigate and utilizing that. Also, in the best part of it, inspiration from computer games. <laughs> so the map design that I've made very much takes inspiration from computer game maps. There's a little bit of Grand Theft Auto in it, a little bit of Skyrim, a little bit of Pokemon Go even. So it's looking at ways that maps are displayed in different situations digitally. And the reason computer game get maps are so useful for this is that they are in, when there's a mini map like in the corner of your screen, they don't want that to take up too much of the screen space because they need that for actual gameplay rather than your little navigational aid. So they've designed them to be really useful whilst being very small. And the problem with smartphones is that they're trying to get this massive map onto a tiny little phone screen. By taking inspiration for how these games companies have been doing it over the years and like evolving their systems, try and take inspiration from that and put it into real world maps and seeing how it goes. I haven't done all the analysis on what's happened with my test runs with my study participants, but from uh, the comments that people have made and like the general feel of how people were doing, it seems to be that it's working. Like people definitely didn't really have an aversion to it, which is good. There's one or two people who didn't really like it who had said they use maps a lot anyway. So I think if you're used to doing something a certain way and you're quite happy with that, changing is difficult. And if you don't see like the extra reason why you should change, like if it's not got an obvious benefit, then you're not gonna spend your time doing that, which makes sense. But the people who said they're not very good at reading maps, they're not usually very good at navigating, seem to quite like it. So. I'm hoping that the uh, actual data, when I've analyzed that properly, will back that up. But so far it's, lo it's looking good. The way I've been testing it is having people go out and about. I lead them along a route and they're keeping track of where they are on the map as we go with no like, there isn't a GPS thing being used in the map. It's just showing them the map on the screen. So they don't know where they are, but they've got to try and work it out for themselves, if that makes sense. And at various points I've stopped them and then shown them photographs on my, on my phone of things that we've passed. Ask them to point back and then I get a little compass out and 
put it against their finger so I know which direction they pointed. I have no idea if this is going to actually be incorporated into an app that the Ordnance Survey makes. They might take some inspiration from it. I can't see them using it as directly just because to roll it out nationwide, because it relies so heavily on landmarks, it would be quite labour intensive to set it up in the first place. But if they did something crowdsourcing related to get like that landmark information, then it might work. But I kind of imagine they might just take bits and pieces if they do use any of it. I hope that's been interesting. I, yeah, don't really have much else to say for this week other than VidCon was amazing. I really, really hope they do it again next year because I feel so inspired to make stuff. I'm, get, I'm definitely going to be doing more science related content now. I went to the Women in Science panel, panel and it was like, I felt so like motivated to make more STEM videos and talking more about, you know, like my career path and how I've got here. And I'm hoping to also talk to some other women who are in STEM subjects and like try and do like a sort of a chatty series about that which I'm hoping I can start working on over the next couple of months. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully next week I will actually have some updates on my work. <laughs> we can only dream.